Uh, welcome. I, I found you unconscious in the forest, and I brought you to my home. Uh, it's time for the Nerd Blog, everybody. Um, it is a really fun show today. We've got a couple of things to talk about. We're going to start by talking with Jemiah. Jemiah is here. Jemiah, say hi to the people. Tell hey, everybody. Me. Thanks for having me, Nico. I'm happy to be here. Jemiah, I know it's, I now know because I have the vi- Twitch view loading. It's at the bottom of my screen, so I can point downwards. Uh, <laughs> So, so tell me what you do for New Relic. I am a principal product manager at New Relic uh, on our developer ecosystem team. And that means that all of the work I do is really focused on our customers being able to find value with all of the tools that we provide them. Uh, that could be writing technical content, uh, example code, tutorials, and starter guides, and all type of random things. Basically anything that's going to help our customers find value in the platform. Uh, I create what I think are really awesome developer engagements. Uh, I don't know if others will agree, but I do think that they're some some amazing experiences like nerd days and hackathons and things to help our engineers uh, really get their hands on the platform and learn how to take advantage of all of the things that our amazing relics create. Yeah, this is like, you know, your your role is is sort of the most meta connection with developers because you're both connecting with developers, you're connecting with people also who like make stuff within new relics. Yep. So you have like the most hardcore nerdy like product area uh, as far as going out and talking to people. Exactly. Right. So it's it's really trying to bridge that gap between the people that are making the products and uh, the, the customers that are using them. Right. Which are it's it's really important for them to be able to quickly adopt new kind of like features as we put them out there or to just have that support with them just getting started and being able to kind of find that instant value within the platform. Uh, but I really try to focus on, like you said, uh, advocating both ways for our, for our customers and our relics, making sure that everyone can kind of like get their their goals met. Yeah, I, I love that. Oh, and I, I haven't introduced Kirk. I'm being a very rude host <laughs> to the co-host. Kirk, say hi to the people. Tell them what you do for New Relic. Hey, everyone. I'm Kirk Haynes. Um, I am a principal developer relations engineer with uh, New Relic with the Relicans. And um, we're here to talk about some cool stuff. And, and you picked this week because because after this segment we were talking about the Ruby agent. Yep. Um, and so Kirk's might be able to recognize a little bit if you're a bit of a Rubyist. Uh, but first, let's talk about this programmability certification. What it means and why it means. Help us out. Yeah, sure. Um, so we've actually just launched this new certification around programmability on the platform. Uh, programmability is such a strange word, right? Like what ability? Um, but I think programmability is, is one of the, the, the most powerful features that we have. Uh, not it, It's up there in my mind, uh, basically because when we announced programmability, programmability last year, we took the tools that our engineers would use to actually build New Relic, right? So the CLI, all the React components, things that we use to build services like New Relic Log, and we gave our customers access to all of, um, of that power that we actually use to build the platform and allow them to take uh, those tools, the data that's within their account, pair that with any other React components, uh, any third-party data that they'd like to use, and build a full application experience on top of New Relic 1, which is then eventually deployed in the platform, and it lives side by side with their data. So you have the ability to kind of like take this blank scale and build full scale apps. And I think in the year since we launched programmability, we've had customers build about 3000 applications and deploy them into the platform. Uh, and recently we iterated on that, uh, really listening to customers and, and uh, understanding that they want to have that same level of control with their dashboards and launch custom visualizations where you can use those same tools, the, the NR1 CLI, the SDK, our React component library, and build custom charts that add third-party data or like D3 charts that just give you so much more control over the way you visualize your data in your dashboards. And um, so now with the programmability certification, like I said, it's really important for us to kind of like empower our customers in, in really learning how to take advantage of those core features and so that's the goal of what this course is, is uh, meant for, right? So it takes you through the full application development experience uh, using React, using GraphQL or NerdGraph, as we call it, our GraphQL API implementation. 
And it, it walks you through building a full application and deploying that into your account. And then in the second segment, it explains everything about custom visualizations, teaches you how to build a visualization, how to customize it, how to add it to your dashboard. So by the end of this course, you'll basically be a pro at just taking advantage of everything that's provided to you with programmability at New Relic. And that means that you can take all of the data within your account and build any type of custom experience that you that you wish for. So who would you say is like your target here? It feels like this is less for like, hey, I've not used New Relic before. I haven't sent any data, but it's, it's more for, hey, you know, we're sending New Relic a lot of data, but we want to level up a little bit in the kind of information we're giving. Yeah, exactly. So it's not for uh, the, the new person that just signed up. I think it's a, you just sign up and you can start learning how to uh, how to kind of like build these applications. But really, after you start sending data into your account, you've uh, built some dashboards and you have an understanding of like the platform, right? You you know you you use your golden signals and things like that. You have like your normal experience. What we've noticed is that there's a point where customers are like, man, if I like I have this amazing dashboard, but if I could just visualize like my data in this way, like if I had this extra little piece, um, it, it would be great. Like it adds so much value to our business. And that's where programmability really shines, right? It's like you, you no longer have that blocker, like that little piece, you can create pretty much anything that you'd like. Uh, mm -hmm. We also like customers that they have so much data within New Relic, but they're still using kind of like other external services and they really want to mash that data together to create like a unique experience and get like a full view of, of their kind of like business metrics, right? That's when building a new Relic application is really going to come in and allow you to take advantage of kind of like the power of the new Relic platform and go far beyond what's available with any other observability tool out there. Yeah, I, I really like this because, you know, there really is this whole stage after kind of getting in really solid data in your like so Stage one tends to be like, hey, you're getting some indicators that you have a problem. So like, you know, you're watching your car's, uh, temp your engine's temperature, you know? And it's like, mm -hmm. okay, this kind of helps me you know, but I don't have a lot of really detailed data. Stage two is like, you have a full harness in place where you, you can see most of what's going on. You can detect problems before they happen. And stage three is you're really putting it in a way that is super useful to everybody. So yeah. uh, a demo I saw last week with the BIP project was, hey, we have people going through this online boot camp, and we want to know not just like who's going through the lessons, but which section are they completing and which mentor do they work for? And you can say like, hey, this mentor is at the top of a leaderboard, and then we can construct a leaderboard that now anybody can look at and use. And exactly. when you want to get to that point of, you know, maybe you can see the data in the logs or however else you can see it but you want to get it in a format where anybody in the team can understand it. This is kind of where this comes in. Yep. I have, like you said, like it, it really allows you to start uh, making connections that just aren't readily available. Um, I think when we think about the tools that we build, we think about them on a large scale, right? Like we need to create uh, services that are going to impact all of our customers in a way that they can have like the, the best, uh, view of what's going on within their accounts, right? And I think that we do an amazing job at that. So shout out to New Relic there. Um, but at some point as a customer, you're going to have very small segments of like, I, I need to correlate kind of like these interactions with what's going on with my performance. And I remember a cool idea from, or a really cool interaction uh, from like late 2019, early 2020, is we had a customer that they were doing kind of like some sponsored content. And I think like uh, every time Kim Kardashian or some other celebrities would tweet, it would cause a spike in their traffic. And so they wanted to track, you know, kind of like the tweets that were going out to the performance of like their services with their browser data. And so they used programmability to build an application where they could actually see you know, like the, the stream of their tweets and their mentions, anytime their companies was mentioned next to the actual performance data of their services and making sure that um, their systems were working with that influx of users coming in because of what was going on on social media. Mm -hmm. you know, so, and this is a really powerful tool to be able to do something like that, right? Like just to sit your tweets side by side with, you know, your e-commerce browser data. Yeah, I really, really like 
like hearing that. Um, to my, I mean, like I just want people to check this out, especially they're pretty deep into into New Relic. Um, do you have advice for people to get started, or should they really just go check out the page and and go and try it out? Yeah, I'd say there's two ways uh, to get started with this uh, programmability certification program. You definitely want to go to learn.newrelic. I have it up on the screen. Um, it's going to be learn.newrelic forward slash programmability certification. But our, our learn.newrelic, our NRU websites, where we have a ton of kind of like self-paced learning content for you to become successful with New Relic and learn all of the key skills that are just required for you to actually take advantage of the platform. So that's where you'll go to sign up for the certification course. It's 100% free. It's always going to be there. We're going to make sure that as we continue to add uh, features into programmability, that this course is always up to date as the source of truth for that content. And then there's also the developer website, which is just a great resource for any developer that wants to learn how to use New Relic in a programmatic way. And there's a ton of content there about uh, programmability in general, as well as all of the hands-on labs that are within the certification course are pulled in through the developer site. So uh, definitely sign up on learn.newrelic and start that course and then just see what we have available as well on the developer website for you. Love that. Um, but Jemai, is there other stuff you want to get across to people or advice you have for people getting started? Um, I'd say it, it's really like it's the same as building any other application. Like with these apps, you, uh, it, you're you building full React apps. So I think for me, the best way to learn is to just kind of like start tinkering around with it, right? Like creating a few small projects and seeing like some fun things, some fun things that I can do, add some cat photos to your new relic data or something like that. Mm -hmm. But for me, the, the, the best way to just kind of like get started is to actually go in there, start tink tinkering with it, seeing what you can do. And then that's the best way to learn. Uh, and uh, Creature Next has a, uh, 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 a good question, which is where you can where you can go if you have trouble installing New Relic One. I will say, New Relic One itself is just a term for uh, the new interface for New Relic. So, so that's something you should need to install. You should you should have that already. If you're having trouble just installing a New Relic agent or some other tool to send data to New Relic, um, a really good place to start would be support.newrelic.com and just submitting a ticket and getting some assistance there. Or come hit me up on uh, the Twitter. I, I occasionally get DM from people who are stuck. And I, I love helping people out. Uh, so you can come find me online at uh, Serverless Mom. Uh, and uh, yeah, we'll talk it through. Thanks for asking, Creature Next. All right. Um, I, think we're, I think we're ready to go BRB and, 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 and set up our next segment. You feeling good? Yeah. Yep. Nice. You always got the best stuff for us. Thank you so much for coming out. Thanks We're for having me. Be Appreciate right back, it. but it's just a moment. Stay alive, everyone, no matter what occurs. And we'll be <laughs> right back. <laughs>